Veganism Defended Defended by Leslie J. Cross from The Vegan Summer Issue, 1947 The vegan versus lacto-vegetarian discussion probably needs a rest, but there are some general observations which might help. The subject is bound to recur. It is fundamental because veganism springs from the source from which lacto-vegetarianism first emerged. The basic argument for lacto-vegetarianism is the basic argument for vegan vegetarianism. The emancipation of the animal world from man-imposed cruelties and unnecessary exploitation. Veganism is not an offshoot from a main stem, but a central extending growth, and unless this is remembered, we shall wander into all sorts of futile byways. Mr Milton Powell's so-called critical examination of veganism is a case in point. If his article in the February Messenger had been called I believe in cow's milk for human beings and here's why, he would have earned the respect due to honest pugnacity if not an acceptance of his arguments. Extravagant language and rhetorical illogicalities plus an obvious bias may be permissible at some levels of argument, but they do not constitute a critical examination, which is a disinterested analysis. Nor are they very helpful in the pursuit of the truth. The clear thinker must have been offended by the inaccurate label on the article, as well as by much of its contents. I don't believe that in his heart any lacto-vegetarian thinks that vegan is wrong. They usually start by saying, ethically you are right, but... And yet, if there is any order in the universe, how can an ethical wrong be a scientific right? Why is it so wrong, as Mr Powell suggests in the April Messenger, for the vegan to attack those foods which are products of cruelty and which meet with his disapproval first on that ground and secondly and logically on scientific grounds. The lacto-vegetarian attacks flesh meat for precisely the same reasons. The positive approach is not neglected and if Mr Powell knows as much about veganism as he pretends to, he will know that in spite of the difficulties now, non-animal milks are coming along. There is one aspect of the discussion which provides room for speculation what will be the effect upon the vegetarian society of the inevitable growth of the vegan society? Will the vegetarian society become more and more devoted to the cause of lacto-vegetarianism purely and simply? It would be a pity if it did, though it has to be remembered that to the vegan, the use of cow's milk particularly is as abhorrent on all grounds as is the use of flesh meat to the lacto-vegetarian. Finally, here is an observation on which Mr Powell and some others may care to ponder. It is the experience of many vegans that more opposition, or perhaps I should say more surface opposition, to veganism is met with among lacto-vegetarians than is found among those flesh-eaters who are not unsympathetic to the principles of vegetarianism.